For a reversible isothermal expansion and compression, the formula for work is obtained by replacing the external pressure with the gas pressure. For an irreversible expansion, the gas expands here against a constant external pressure. Less work is obtained from this path than from the reversible path. When you click your mouse button, the pressure suddenly drops to zero. This is like a piston expanding in outer space. Since the external pressure is zero, no work is done in this process. The last step returns the gas pressure back to state two because the piston cannot be removed from the cylinder. The intake valve is opened, and as steam is forced in, the piston expands doing work. Since the steam comes from the hot reservoir, that is the boiler at constant temperature, we take this step to be isothermal. At point B, the intake valve is closed, and the hot steam cools and expands with no intake of new steam. We take this step to be an adiabatic expansion. At the point of greatest expansion, the piston starts back up. The exhaust valve opens and the cooled steam is exhausted to the atmosphere. This is an isothermal compression. It is easier to compress a cool gas than a hot gas. Finally, the exhaust valve closes and the piston carries on to complete the cycle by compressing the gas. As it compresses the gas, it heats it back up to the starting temperature. This is an adiabatic compression. One of thermodynamics' greatest achievements is the ability to predict if a process will be spontaneous or not. A system at higher temperature has greater entropy than the same system at lower temperature. Molecules with more complicated structures have greater entropy. A system with more atoms or molecules has greater entropy. A gas has greater entropy than a liquid. A liquid has greater entropy than a solid. The series of 2, 3, 4 and 10 dice are designed to show you that as the number of dice increases, so the number of accessible states, W, increases. Very quickly, the number of random states starts to dominate and it becomes less and less probable to roll anything but a random state with a small range of outcomes. Crystal field theory explains most of the properties of complex iron bonding. Ligand field theory is actually MO theory applied to complex ions and is only briefly considered in these tutorials. The idea of crystal field theory is that the ligands approach the central atom and create a local crystal type field and this affects the d orbitals of the central atom. Transition metal chemistry is dominated by the d electrons that can occupy the 5d orbitals. Here is shown the 5d orbitals of the free central atom. Also the 5d orbitals in the tetrahedral field and the 5d orbitals in an octahedral field. In an octahedral field, six ligands approach, two along the plus and minus z axis, two along the plus and minus x axis, and two along the plus and minus y axis. 
When a ligand encounters a lobe of the central atom's d orbitals, it raises the energy. Hence, the dz squared and the dx squared minus y squared orbitals, which lie along the x, y, and z axes, are raised in energies, whereas the dxy, dyz, and dxz are out of the way of the ligands and are of lower energy. In a tetrahedral crystal field, four ligands approach along opposite corners of a cube, forming a tetrahedral crystal field. In this case, the dxy, the dyz, and the dxz orbitals are raised in energy, whereas the dx squared minus y squared and dz squared orbitals are lowered in energy.